is a day that the Lord has made. Surely we will be glad and we will rejoice therein. It's always a joy to be able to share the Word of God. It's always be a joy to quote that verse. When I get up in the morning, I, I try to quote that verse because it means so much as you think about the day and what the day might hold. We don't know exactly what each day will hold, but we know uh, it's a day the Lord's made and whatever happens our way, we're going to rejoice, we're going to shout, we're going to praise Him, we're going to glorify Him, uh, we're going to try to read His Word, we're going to study uh, we're going to invite the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us and direct us along the way. So what a wonderful day it is to be able to rejoice in the things of God. The peace that God gives us passes all the understanding and knowledge of the Word that we and I might have that peace down inside our heart and the peace of God in our soul that we can glorify the Lamb of God. We would like to share with you today a message from the book of Revelation. Revelation is a tremendous book. I preached some while back on the man that wouldn't stop praying. And we talked about Daniel and how the government said to Daniel, you can't pray anymore for 30 days. You'll not be able to pray. But Daniel got before God as always and he prayed and saw the face of God uh, and yet they put him in a lion's den and yet God provided a way to bring him through that. Today we want to talk about a man that wouldn't stop preaching. Thank God for preachers that won't stop preaching. They just preach right along life's way and carry the gospel of the Lord Jesus. Jesus. Throughout the course of history you find that many have been martyred for preaching the Word of God. And old John the uh, Revelator, I was preaching and he preached so hard and God gave him uh, some of the greatest principles and we have as far as the future is concerned about the book of Revelation. Of course, the book of John and 1 John, 2 John, 3 John and the books that John had pinned down. But because of his message that he was delivering, the people of that time got so mad, they said, let's cast him out on the little island called Patmos and we'll leave him out there and we'll let him die. And that's what they did. They brought him out, they cast him out, and they left him there to die. But God had a purpose in this man's life. God had a, a message that he wanted delivered and he chose this man John to pin down uh, the book of Revelation that we have today. I realize there is a lot of controversy about the book of Revelation. A lot of different beliefs about the book of Revelation and what the book of Revelation is all about. 
But a revelation is simply God giving to you and I a revelation of what is to come. I said, Blessed is a man that readeth this book and hear the word, to keep the word that you find. And God blessed us when we began to read many years ago as we opened up Revelation and began to read and God began to bless. And surely today God will bless us as we go through the book of Revelation and thinking about the goodness of God and the revelation that God has unveiled. When you think about an overall picture of the book of Revelation, it talks about John being on that island of Patmos and God opened his eyes, his vision. He was able to look into the third heaven and saw the Lord Jesus seated on the throne. Eyes of the flame of fire, feet like fine brass, hair like wool and we saw the girdle of gold and we saw him, and he saw uh, him in a manner as he's now seated. Before he left, he said, I've got to go away. And he said, I'm going to the Father. And now he's seated there before God at the right hand to ever make intercession for you and I. In the second chapter, in the third chapter of the book of Revelation, uh, God gave to John a revelation about the seven churches of that day, seven churches of Asia, and the condition of those seven churches, giving us a picture of what might be during these latter days. Actually, it's a course of history that's laid out. When you study your history and then study the church age, you'll see the different periods of time that are unveiled uh, as John wrote those uh, churches down or pinned them down as God gave him the revelation. Also, it's a picture of the last days. It's a picture just before the coming of the Lord. He talked about they lost their first love as it was in the in the church that we find in the book of Revelation chapter 2 as they begin to uh, unveil the church that had lost their first love. Uh, then we find they followed the doctrines of the Nicolaitans and then the doctrines of Baal and then the doctrines of Jezebel and then some were dead and then some were lukewarm and some going through many different stages of life and yet we find that today is how they Sometimes we find ourselves uh, looking at the world today and seeing the situation that they were living in and how the condition is today. But when we see all of that, we see the condition of the church. And he said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. And so we see that. We see the condition as it was just before the flood or just before a tribulation or just before the wrath of God was poured out. And so John is seeing the condition of the church. Then when he gets to the fourth and fifth chapter, we find that he looked up and he saw a door opened in heaven. As he saw the door opened in heaven, he looked and he saw the Son of the living God. There the, the four beasts around the throne and they're crying, Holy, Holy, Holy. We saw the 24 elders around the throne while they begin to give praise, singing, Worthy, Worthy, Worthy is the Lamb of God. And they're giving praise to God Almighty and praising Him for the blessed Lamb of God. And then, of course, John wept because there was a sealed book. No one was worthy to open that sealed book. And the elder came and he said, Weep not, because there was one that was worthy to open it. He said, The lion from the tribe of Judah, I was worthy. Uh, the stem of Jesse or David. And now we find that he looked, and rather than seeing the lamb, he saw the lion, he saw the lamb, saw the lamb of God. And then they sang the song about worthy, worthy is the lamb of God, praising the blessed lamb of God. In chapter 6, we find the wrath of God as God begins to pour out his wrath. Four horsemen that come, and those horsemen will bring phantom and death and judgment on the face of this herd. And then chapter 7, he talks about uh, the 140. 44,000. He talks about those that are sealed out, those that have been martyred. Chapter 8 deals with the trumpets of God and how God begins to bring judgment on the face of this earth. Chapter 9 continues the judgment. Chapter 10 is a little sealed book that God has brought uh, that he said, seal up. We don't know what's in that book. We don't know what was there, but we yet we know that God said, seal up the book, whether it be good or whether it be bad, but yet God had him to seal it up. Uh, whether it was more than we can bear, or what it might be, he said, seal it up. Still sealed today. No one knows what's in that little book, but we thank God for what he's given us, the revelation that we have, that we can glorify him. Chapter 11, he talked about two witnesses that would come. Those two witnesses would come 
high and they would preach in the streets of Jerusalem and uh, Satan would overcome them. And then uh, after a few days they resurrect and God uh, has his way, has his will to be done during that period of time. Chapter 12 deals with a red dragon. Chapter 13 deals with a beast. Uh, chapter 14 deals with the battle of Armageddon. He called it the battle of Armageddon. At the end of the tribulation there will be a battle of Armageddon. Chapter 15 is introduction to chapter 16 where God opens up the vials and begins to pour the vials or judgment uh, on the face of this earth. And surely it will come. Don't have time this morning to go into all the details about the judgment that is there, but it'll come just like God said it would uh, in the blessed Word of God. And so chapter 15 and 16 deals with that. Chapter 17 uh, and chapter 18 deals with the Babylonian system, a one-world system and a one-world uh, religious system. Ecclesiastical Babylon will be set up, a religious order, a religious system, and then there will be a one-world government system. We are there. We're reaching that hour. We're reaching that moment uh, when it's time that God will open that door and it will come just like he said that it would come. Chapter 19 deals with the marriage supper of the Lamb and how God uh, will have the bride made ready and there will be the great marriage supper in heaven. Then he comes back King of kings and Lord of lords uh, and he comes, uh, places his feet here on Mount Olive and there we'll see the kingdom of God being shut up, the kingdom of heaven. Uh, chapter 20 deals with a, a a thousand year period of time when Satan will be bound and a lion will lay down with a lamb. It will be a time of peace on the earth for that thousand year that God will bring this to be. And then chapter 21, uh, 22 talks about New Jerusalem coming down. And so that's a brief outline of what Revelation is all about. And it takes a lifetime of study to go through all of that and put all of that together and bring it all together that we might see a visual, sort of a panoramic view. Now we realize that it's very difficult put all of these scriptures in one pigeonhole, one period of time. But Isaiah said a little here, a little there, line upon line, precept upon precept, putting it all together that we might see the hand of God as it were. But what I want to bring out this morning is the Lamb of God. And woven through all of this turmoil and all of the things that's going on, we see the Lamb of God. We talked about the blood the last time, about the blood of the blessed Lamb of God and what we have through the precious blood. And so we want to see the Lamb of God that provided the blood, the sacrificial blood that God provided for you and I. When you go back through the pages of God's Word, you'll find the Lamb woven. It was prophesied. He was prophesied through the Old Testament day. Abraham saw a lamb. Abraham had a commission to go take his son up to Mount that God would reveal to him. And we know that to be Mount Moriah where God led Abraham there he was to offer up his son Isaac. And about to offer up his son Isaac as he was there about to make ready uh, his son to be sacrificed. Uh, the son said, we have the fire, we have the wood, we have the altar, but where's the lamb? And then God said he would provide himself a lamb. Thank God for the lamb of God. When Abraham looked, he saw the lamb caught in the thicket. Uh, and God provided the sacrificial lamb showing our substitute and how it should be you and I that goes to that cross or goes to that altar but God said he would provide himself a lamb and that's what he did provided that lamb we find Moses saw the holy lamb Moses was about to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt because of the bondage that they had been in. And history teaches us that they were there for over 400 years in bondage uh, to the Egyptian people. But the uh, Lord heard their cries. They began to cry out. And He sent a man named Moses down to pull them out. And there He said, I want you to paint the door uh, with the blood Kill an animal, kill a lamb, place your blood on the doorpost, and when the death angel comes by, he said, I'll pass over you. And that's where we get our Passover from, and that we celebrate in our churches today is because of that Passover lamb. And the death angel came during the midnight hour, and the death angel passed over those that were covered with the blood. And there'll be a midnight hour when the death angel will come, and God will take care of you and I that have been covered with the blood of the Lamb of God. We find that Isaiah saw an humble lamb 
Isaiah chapter 53, we talked about that lamb and we found that uh, the book of Isaiah shows the lamb of God throughout the pages there. But yet in Isaiah 53, he was crucified. He went to that old rugged cross. He shed blood. He died that you and I uh, might have eternal life. Open not his mouth, but he went as a lamb, very humble, that you and I might have eternal life. And then there was John the Baptist. John the Baptist had no doubt read many parts of the Old Testament, coming out of the wilderness, a, a great man of God. And his message was, Repent, uh, the King is coming, the Messiah is coming. Many rebel, many receive. But yet there was a day, he was in that old Jordan River, had the privilege some while back to go into that Jordan River and, and baptize. I had the privilege of baptizing my son in that Jordan River. What a day it was uh, when we were able to uh, have a group of people and we read Scripture and we went into the Jordan River and baptized him in that old Jordan River. And I can picture old John the Baptist uh, in that area uh, somewhere along the Jordan River baptizing those that had come. Many had come. And all of a sudden he looks up and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that comes to take away the sins of the world. I believe old John got excited about that time, about that hour when he saw John chapter 1 verse 29 where he said, Behold, the Lamb of God. And I, I thank God. And each time I go through that, each time I think about the Lamb of God, I, I think about Behold, look, there's something to see. And the nation around them saw the blessed blood of the Lamb of God. And you and I ought to be able to shout this morning and say thank God for the blood, thank God for the Messiah, thank God for the Lamb that shed His blood on the cross of Calvary. He came that we might have eternal life. And then the Hebrew writer uh, saw the heavenly Lamb. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 14 and on, on through he talked about uh, the Lamb of God. And then old John saw the Lamb of God out on the island of Patmos. He looked up and saw. So we know that the Lamb was prophesied, identified, glorified, typified, and crucified uh, throughout the pages of God's holy word. But what I want to share with you today is the Lamb of God woven through the pages of the book of Revelation and how, how it stands out in in our minds and in our heart and in our soul where we can glorify the Lamb of God. Our purpose today is just to glorify the blessed Lamb of God. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 6. But let me read verse 5 to bring out our thought. He said, One of the elders said unto me, Weep not, behold. Here again we find the word behold. The word behold simply means there's something important that's about to come up. It means stop Look and listen. There's something great that's about to happen. And he said, The line from the tribe of Judah, the root of David. And so we find that God prevailed, one to open and loose the seventh seal. And so we thank God for that. I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and the midst of the elder stood a lamb. And so John on this island of Patma saw the Lamb of God. He looked up and he saw the Lamb standing at the right hand of God. Then in verse 12, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Angels all around, singing holy, holy, holy to the Lamb of God. Elders around, we'll be singing that new song. We'll be able to sing, Worthy is the Lamb of God. And surely He is worthy. Thank God for the Lamb. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy for you and I to come before Him and humble before Him. So we see there was honor to the Lamb. The blessed Lamb of God was honored as John looked up. This will happen just like John said it would uh, in the latter days. Chapter 4 of the book of Revelation simply gives a picture of how we'll be called into the heavens and we'll glorify the Lamb of God. In Revelation chapter 6 and verse 16, we find the wrath of the Lamb. Now the wrath of, of the Lamb will be sure to come. I won't have time to go through the sixth chapter, but it deals with the wrath of God and how God will pour out judgment. God is a God of love. We thank God for the love of God. We thank God for the mercy of God. We thank God for the grace of God. And we ought to preach a love of God, but the wrath of God is woven through the pages. The Lord Jesus Himself, I said, where the worm doth not, and the fire is never quenched. Sometimes uh, uh, God's anger is kindled. When God looked down in the days of Noah, and it angered God uh, uh, because of the condition of mankind, and there will be a day the wrath of God will be poured out. In verse 16 of the book of Revelation 6, 
and he said unto the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of God. And so there'll be a day, there'll be a time, there'll be a tribulation hour when God will pour out his wrath on the face of this earth because of the rebellion of mankind. Listen, God loves you. He died for you. He shed his blood that you might have eternal life. But for those that reject him, those that refuse to follow the principles of God and the way of God, God said, whosoever will, let him come. Jew, Gentile, bond or free can come and be born in the family of God and God loves you enough that he was willing to do that. Then in Revelation chapter 7 and verse 14 we find uh, the Lamb of God uh, or the blood of the Lamb, the honor of the Lamb, the wrath of the Lamb. And now John brings out about the blood of the Lamb and we've covered that uh, here lately about the blood of the Lamb of God. He said, I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which come out of the great tribulation and have washed their robes and made themselves white in the blood of the Lamb. Talking about the martyred saints. Those that'll stand like John and like many others. John the Baptist got his head cut off for standing on the principles of God's holy word. Stephen was stoned because he stood on the principles of God's holy word. Uh, we find the disciples and the death of the disciples. Some were crucified upside down. Some were beheaded and some died in many mysterious ways as we see the martyred saint. But one day God will give a crown. There's a crown to be won for those that will follow God, listen to God and walk according to the principles of God but there'll be martyred saints and here we find the blood of the Lamb of God covered them and they're secure in the ways of the Lord Revelation chapter 15 and verse 3 we find the song of the Lamb and that is as the Lamb of God uh, was portrayed through uh, the book of Revelation and how the song is the song of Moses. You remember as they were delivered, uh, the Passover supper, then they were delivered, and then they saw Miriam begin to sing a song. They begin to sing praises. The Bible said, Let everything that has breath Praise ye the Lord. And we've come to praise Him. We've come to lift Him up. We've come to sing. That's why we sing in our church about the blood. There's power in the blood. We sing about the Lamb that was crucified on Calvary that we might have victory through that. In Revelation 15 verse 3, And they sung the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy work, Lord God Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of of the saints. And so we find the song that they sing. Surely, Lord God Almighty. I'm glad he placed that in there. Lord God, the Master Elohim, El Shaddai, the Almighty, all-powerful God. And surely he is all-powerful. The Almighty, all-sovereign, all-powerful God as he brings this out before us today that we might sing. You ought to sing about the blood. You ought to sing the songs of praise to our Lord and our Savior because of who He is and because of what He's done. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 7. Again, we won't have time to go into the marriage supper. And I do realize that what I'm giving you this morning should be a, a, a two-year uh, study time. that We might go through this for about two years and study the book of Revelation and what I'm doing condensing it down where you might have an understanding uh, of the book of Revelation. To get a panoramic view of the Lamb that God had woven through this book. Uh, some people said, well don't read the, the book of Sean. If you just go in there and read the, uh, the uh, book of Revelation, if you just go through there and read what the, he has to say about the Lamb, why well, you'll be under conviction, you'll be shouting, you'll be praising God, you'll be glorifying God and if you're lost, you'll probably get born in the family of God because of the blood of the blessed Lamb of God. It was there. The marriage supper, the bride has made herself ready. Let us be glad. So be glad this morning. Rejoice and give honor to Him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and God has prepared a marriage supper that we'll be able to glorify the blessed Lamb of God. Then in Revelation chapter 21 and verse 23, he talks about uh, the Lamb of God and how God uh, will provide uh, the Lamb. The Lamb's wife has made herself ready. 21, 23, again he's talking about the, the Lamb of God. And the city shall have no need of the sun, neither the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God 
did lighten it, and the is the light thereof. And so we have the we have the Lamb of God. We are reflections of God's glory. We are the reflections. That's why we call this our reflecting God's glory program. Because we're light. Let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works and glorify uh, our Father in heaven or glorify the Lamb of God. And surely we want to be that reflection. But if you ever thought about uh, a reflection and how a reflection is, uh, if a diamond, you must have uh, another light to reflect that diamond. Put it in darkness and it doesn't reflect. But if you put light on that diamond, it reflects. Well, Jesus is that light. And He shines. He is the one that shines on us so that we might reflect Him as we walk through the face of this earth. So we want to be a reflection of that glory. We want to be a reflection of the Word of God. And so we need your prayer that you might pray, you might get in touch with God and pray for this ministry that God might continue to help us to open doors for us that we might preach the Word of God, that we might teach the Word of God, uh, that we might see people saved, we might see people healed, we might see the hand of God. It's all about what the Lamb did on the cross of Calvary, all about the blood that He shed on the cross of Calvary, that we have eternal life. And so we trust that somewhere down the line, this has been a blessing to you. Give thanks to the Lord as we call upon His name. Let's make known of all His deeds to all the world. Let's sing psalms into His name and tell of all His wondrous work. Let's give glory, yeah, glory to His name. Well, I'm so glad that I'm saved. I'm so glad that I'm free. I'm so glad that all my sins are washed away. Oh, well, he placed within my heart a new song to sing. Oh, praise God, soon I'll crown him king. Oh, let the hearts of them rejoice, those that seek out the Lord. Let us seek out his strength and his face. Oh, let's remember all he's done and the battles he has won. Let's give glory, yeah, glory to his name. Well, until Jesus comes or until I go, I will lift up and glorify his name. Well, I can freely say that my life now has changed from the day, yeah, from the day I got saved. Well, I'm so glad that I'm saved. I'm so glad that I'm free. I'm so glad that all my sins are washed away. Oh, well, he placed within my heart a new song to sing. Oh, praise God, soon I'll crown him king. Well, I'm so glad that I'm saved. I'm so glad that I'm free. I'm so glad that all my sins are washed away. Well, he placed within my heart a new song to sing. Oh, praise God, soon I'll crown him king.